Welcome back friends, welcome back to the homestead. Um, as the title of the video suggests, um, it's time to talk about my failures in terms of this. This is the control box for the um, automation of the greenhouse. Now I'm probably being a little bit hard on myself. Um, this was built now um, 18 months ago during the winter, not gone but before, for the for the, being used last year and it did a pretty good job of what it's supposed to do but it was my first attempt and as you know I like to experiment and with experiments come successes sometimes and also come failures um, and you learn through those and through iter the process of iterations you, you, you get better and better so I'm about to start the process of building version 2 of this box and I thought before I did that it would be helpful for you guys to be able to learn uh, from the mistakes I've made and maybe um, in the comments below you can add to those mistakes as well um, for the benefit of the community. So um, first thing is I've got five, six things, uh, five really and then kind of a six is more of a, an overall philosophy but um, the first one is uh, data over function or that's what I did and my learning curve has been to put function over data. Now in this smart world that we live in we want to look at our phones or devices and, and know what's going on. Um, we want to be in control don't we? We want to be in control of everything when actually we've designed machines to keep control and that's the case here. I, I've you know this box of tricks which is currently off because it's hot in here and the fan wants to be constantly on. Um, this box of tricks will completely look after the greenhouse all by itself. It doesn't need any intervention by myself but um, you know 50% of the deal really with, with, with the smart devices is that you can see the data and you can store the data and uh, analyze it later on. So what I'd done in the routine, the program routine, is I had told it to, in, to insist on it that it connected to the Wi-Fi before it went through any of the function routines. So if it couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi it wouldn't continue then to control the greenhouse. It would get stuck in a loop um, of attempting to do it five times and then resetting itself in case there was something wrong with itself and so on and so on. Now um, I solved the problem of Wi-Fi connection by putting the antenna out here uh, extended from up in the loft and, and then that allows all the devices in the garden to connect. But what I didn't appreciate was there was a problem with power which we'll come on to next um, and when the device was switching on Wi-Fi it was lowering the power and then it couldn't function, it couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi, it was intermittent. Um, whether that was anything to do with the heat I don't know, it just seemed to be better when things were cooler in here but anyway it struggled. Um, the moment I, uh, well, yesterday really, I took the routine out of for the Wi-Fi connection it's functioned perfectly okay and worked itself. And you know the mistake there was that I prioritised the data for me over the function of the greenhouse and of course we're growing food here and the, the functioning of the greenhouse, correct functioning of the greenhouse, is the most important thing and I should have prioritised that over um, the Wi-Fi connection and the data. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Now connected to that was, uh, I talked about power, so num point number two is is getting the right power. The microcontroller in here, the ESP32, uses 5 volts um, on the board and well actually it uses 3.3 volts and it has a built-in um, kind of butt converter, a power um, reducer to, to take the input voltage and turn it into 3.3 volts. Now on a USB connection which it's got on there uh, it is 5 volts of course. Um, and then that reduces that to 3.3 for it to function. Or you can put 5 volts directly on a pin of the controller. What I was you what I'd done is for convenience, I thought it's better to have find a USB um, connector device. So I found a um, power converter for taking 12 volts down to 5 volts, and that plugs into USB quite neatly and um, arguably elegantly, which I'll come back to. Um, that word elegant. And um it was only feeding 5 volts and I've since found out that through a lot of research that sometimes if you only give it 5 volts it really struggles um, when it kicks the Wi-Fi on or something so you really need to feed maybe 6 or 7 volts in which is still okay and then it will still you know convert that down to five, the 3.3 volts that it needs with the right milliamps. So something was going on there with the power and, and to solve that in version 2 I'm going to have two power sources. One 
um, for the ASP uh, individually and then um, through a pin rather than the USB and then another 5 volt supply for all the other bits and pieces in there because it was all coming from the same unit from the 5 volt it's going into the through USB into the controller out of the pin back to everything else it's only relays and stuff like that on this there's not an awful lot to control but it was obviously causing problems and the USB the ESP sorry the microcontroller should have its own voltage number three was learning about um and this is kind of a school by error really I did microelectronics or electronics when I was a kid um literally early teens a little bit of theory at college um, when I was a washing machine engineer but no practical stuff and then I kind of left the world of DC and anything I've done since then has been AC related and then I've come back now last year to DC and I've forgotten about the common ground element of DC and I wasn't connecting all the negatives or the grounds together it's a simple schoolboy area but it will cause you so much grief if you don't do that um, and that's something I've learned for version 2 um, that was a nice easy one but yeah um, slap wrist for Point that. Point number 4 is elegance um, the elegance of solutions really um, I probably went for simplicity in some cases where I should have gone a bit more um, done a bit more research so things like the window can the window actuators which are um, over there they um, are switched polarity to work so when it's positive and negative on two pins it opens and when you switch the polarity it closes and it switches itself off when it fully opens or fully closes and to do that I used uh, two relay two relays per window to switch the two polarities so you have um, positive and negative on one relay and positive and negative on the other relays and they're switching in opposite directions um, to be able to control that. Arguably an elegant solution but the stupidity element of it is if one of those relays breaks then it um, it, it basically um, breaks, it doesn't break the circuit, it crosses positive and negative together so you get a short um, and that's what happened and it blew the fuse. Um, was I unfortunate for the relay to fail? Maybe, I don't know. Um, but I couldn't find a double double toggle, um, sorry, single toggle, double throw relay. Um, because I went for elegance of having everything nice and neat on the same row of relays and stuff like that, rather than kind of more a bit more thought provoking practicality so um, now I've got a double throw relay separate so the small 5 volt relays that are, um, are used will control the bigger relay that also then means I can have an over I can um, kind of have a, um, a switch a toggle to take over control of what's happening with the windows um, and control that big relay and control both polarities at the same time sort of thing um, it worked so much better than the setup I've got now albeit a little bit more complicated and one more mechanical thing to go wrong but if it goes wrong it's not a big problem um, so that's the kind of elegance element of it and I guess connected to that was research so the fifth fifth point I wanted to make is a little bit of future proofing and that is this box is okay but for version 2 I'm going to use a bigger box so the fifth tip kind of thing or the thing I got wrong is I didn't buy the biggest box possible there's the bigger box as you can see much bigger um, much deeper as well this is a this is looks nice and small um, and kind of elegant I suppose um, and again a trap the trap of elegance it's really fiddly when you open it up to work inside I need something much bigger a lot more space um, for future proofing there's probably the site this is probably big enough to put two ESPs on it if I want to control different things at the same time so do yourself a favor buy a bigger box and connected to that and it's kind of a six thing really is um, help out your future self make it easy for your future self to um, fix things and do things by thinking about a bit of future proofing the mis that was a mistake I didn't make I guess with the box and some of these other things the re all those kind of things together I didn't think about like the grief that the it would give my future self the me now um, in trying to fix the things or uh, work with the things that I'd done back then and that's part of the 
you know, learning process and iteration. So I'm not going to be that hard on myself. But the tip for you is try and think about um, the future. I know technologies are f moving at fast paces and we don't know the, the solutions that are going to be coming out that we want to, you know, embed into the new project. So, for example, I've got some new things that are going to go on this that weren't around um, when I built it originally. Um, and, you know, they're going to be fun and uh, look nice and stuff like that and, and give me more data and all those kind of things, more sensors. But uh, the point is, tr is to the best of your ability, trying to give yourself, your future self, um, less grief, really. And I guess that's kind of the overall conclusion or philosophy of, of the video. So I hope you found those five, six things um, helpful. Um, if you've, uh, if that rings any bells or you've got some other things that you thought I, perhaps I've missed um, or um, you top tips that you've gained um, that would help other people, do leave them down in the comments below. That'd be really helpful to share those. Um, so that's it really. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for sticking around. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful. Um, do share it with your friends um, and uh, help us reach a bigger audience. I really appreciate that. So um, I will say bye-bye for now. Um, I am now going off to start version two of this and I've got a bunch of stuff to unpack and um, put into uh, this box so I'm going to be busy in the workshop and I'll take you through that process as well as best I can as we build version two of my um, smart controller for the greenhouse. Thanks again, I'll see you in the next video very soon. Bye for now.